Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As Brian just mentioned, the uh, title of this presentation is Discovery of Novel FOE Lividation Enhancers Against Alzheimer's Disease. My name is Ryan Ballard. I'm the team leader. And to my left, I have James Osborne, Sheena Sanchez, and David Santangelo, Jr. Our faculty advisor was Dr. Sasha Patil of the Chemical Engineering Department. And then our project coordinator was Professor Victor Marcus. Uh, here's just a quick overview of what we'll be talking about today. We're going to have an introduction, some background into Alzheimer's disease, our hypothesis that we developed, goals for the project, project management, our procedure, the results we obtained, the conclusion and accomplishment slide, and a continuation of our work. Now for a little introduction to Alzheimer's disease. Uh, up on the board we have a figure uh, illustrating the impact of Alzheimer's disease in the United States in 2011. There was an estimated 5.4 million people diagnosed with the disease, and there was an annual cost of $183 billion. In 2012, those numbers have increased. We are currently at 5.5 million people that have been diagnosed, and the annual cost has jumped up to $200 billion per year. Also in 2012, Alzheimer's became the sixth leading <coughs> cause of death in the nation. However, it is the only cause of death that has no treatment or cure for it. This figure up on the board now uh, shows the projected numbers of the United States population that will be diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, but on a much larger scale. As I previously mentioned, we are currently at 5.5 million people who have been diagnosed, and it is estimated that in 2050, there will be 13.2 million people with the disease. Also, it is estimated that the annual cost will rise to $1.3 trillion. With these numbers growing rapidly, it is imperative that we find a new source of treatment or a cure for the disease. Currently, there are only four drugs on the market that help with Alzheimer's. They are Razadine, uh, Exelon, Aricept, and Cognex. These drugs only affect the symptoms of Alzheimer's and not the disease directly. That is why it's important for researchers to find a new method in trying to uh, resolve this disease. Now I'm going to turn it over to David. He'll talk about background, our hypothesis, and the goals for the project. Thank you, Ryan. So Alzheimer's disease is defined as a progressive neurodegenerative disease caused by the buildup of amyloid beta plaques in the brain. Now these amyloid beta plaques are essentially toxic deposits that build up in the brain over time and cause the death of neurons or brain cells. And an image of one of these plaques can be seen on the right side of, of the screen. Now the left side of the screen shows uh, a cross section of the cerebral cortex of a brain with the left side of that image showing a healthy brain and the right, side, the right side showing significant cell death and cavity formation caused by the buildup of these plaques causing the death of the cells. Um, now what's significant about our project is that no one else has uh, found a drug to be able to clear these plaques. So we wanted to focus on a, a, a mechanism um, that deals with Alzheimer's, a significant mechanism to focus on to try to find a new drug treatment. And that mechanism that we wanted to focus on was glucose metabolism. Now highly decreased glucose metabolism is, is the most significant characteristic of Alzheimer's disease. And the thermal image on, this, on the screen shows on the left side a uh, thermal scan of a normal brain and it has normal heat output, while on the right side you see um, a thermal scan of a brain that's been affected by Alzheimer's disease. Now this decrease in the, in the thermal output and the heat output represents almost a 50% decrease in the glucose metabolism in a brain that's affected by Alzheimer's disease. And the link that we wanted, we wanted to make a link, we wanted to discover a link between um, the decrease in glucose metabolism and the buildup of these plaques. And that leads us to our hypothesis. So we believe that the decrease in glucose metabolism leads to an increase in the deposition or the buildup of these plaques, which causes Alzheimer's disease. And the link between those two is the decrease in lipidation status in what is known as apolipoprotein E, or APOE for short. Now, apolipoprotein E is a lipid-containing protein, as you see on the right, where the blue squiggly line is the protein, and the yellow and red sphere within that protein is the lipid. And what's significant about this APOE is that it is directly responsible for clearing the plaques out of the brain. And what makes it effective at clearing these plaques is its lipid content. So the more lipid contained within that protein, the more effective it is as, at, at clearing these plaques. So basically what our hypothesis, our hypothesis says is that if we increase glucose metabolism in the brain, we'll increase the lipid content of the APOE, and that will clear more plaques out of the brain and hopefully stop the progression of Alzheimer's disease. 
Now, what we did is we took this hypothesis and we submitted it to a peer-reviewed journal called Medical Hypotheses, and they reviewed it and they believed that we um, could provide um, legitimate evidence to prove our hypothesis, so they published it. And the image on the screen is just a screenshot of the title section and the abstract of that paper. And having this paper published and um, coming up with this original hypothesis was one of our main goals and, and it was a great accomplishment for the team. And that's a great segue into what the goals actually were for this project. So like I said, one of the main goals which we accomplished was um, coming up with this novel hypothesis and having it published so that the rest of the scientific community could use what we came up with to try to um, discover new treatments for Alzheimer's disease. In addition, we wanted to take this hypothesis and test it in the lab. And we wanted to test it using FDA approved drugs, which we already know have been proven to increase glucose metabolism in cells. And we wanted to use FDA approved drugs because if we, if we found that um, they're useful and they can treat Alzheimer's disease, they can be implemented for immediate clinical use. Um, so I'm gonna pass it over to James to go over our project management and our, um, our procedure. Thank you, Dave. As you can see above, this is a general schedule of our overall procedure. Through the fall semester, we were able to accomplish our mobilization, research, and development phases. Our procurement phase lasted from mid-November until the beginning of March, and through the spring semester, we were able to accomplish our, in our installation, testing, and evaluation phases. Our demobilization phase will begin and be completed within the next few weeks. As you may have noticed, our procurement phase was the longest of any of the phases. This is due to the fact that our initial quotes for our, for our materials were much higher than originally anticipated. This required us to revisit and resubmit our budget to the School of Engineering. Uh, this revised budget was approved and we were able to start ordering materials on the 30th of January of this year. All of our materials and equipment were collected and obtained by March 1st, allowing our testing phase to begin. As you see here, this is a summary of our revised budget. We were allotted $1,725 from the School of Engineering, along with $1,600 from the Provost Grant, which was awarded to Dr. Patil. Of this $3,325, we used 3,287 3, of it to purchase all of our materials and equipment. This left us with $38, which we will be returning to the School of Engineering upon completion of this. <laughs> <laughs> and now for the general procedure that we used for this experiment. The first stage of this experiment was to culture the mouse astrocytes, or brain cells, which took approximately two weeks. Directly after culturing these cells, we had to treat them with one of three drugs. The first drug was bexorodine, which is also known as targretin, which is, which is a FDA-approved drug to treat skin cancer. The second drug used was pioglitazone, also known as Actos, which is an FDA-approved drug for diabetes. Both of these, along with the cinnamon extract compound, have been proven in the past to increase glucose metabolism and thus were selected. The next stage of this, directly after the 48-hour drug treatment, the cell culture samples were collected, and these samples were run through two biologic, biochemical processes known as gel electrophoresis and western blotting. These two, pro these two processes allowed us to detect if there was any increase in ApoE lipidation from the treated cells. And now I'm going to turn it over to Sheena to go over our results, conclusion, and future work. Thanks, James. Our initial goal was to develop a hypothesis. This was completed with a publication. Our second goal was to test this hypothesis using pre-approved FDA drugs. We executed an experiment, but we obtained results that were unexpected. During the gel electrophoresis stage, everything seemed to go as planned. However, after the Western blot, we noticed that our results appeared to be inconclusive. Nevertheless, we saw a published study that was very similar to ours, and they used a compound of interest to us, bexorotene, or the commercial name of targretin. As you can see on the right-hand slide, or side, excuse me, as bexorotene, as the molarity increases, the particle size of ApoE increases as well. Um, if you remember as to how Dave described the ApoE particle, you have the, that blue protein that carried the yellow spherical <coughs> lipid. Well, as the particle size increases of ApoE, it just means that the protein is carrying more lipids. 
So the lipid content increases, which also increases the amyloid beta toxin clearance. This clearance directly supports our published hypothesis. Uh, as previously said, our main achievement was our publication. We have concluded with our experiment that it needs to be refined, which will be discussed on the following slide. Um, we also have supporting evidence from Case Western University, where who had a similar study about uh, vexorotein and how the increased glycolysis facilitated by vexorotein increased ACOE lipidation and also increased amyloid beta toxin clearance. This also again supports our hypothesis. We will continue with this project or this experiment with refining it by centrifugal filtration, which will increase ACOE lipidation enough to the point where the Western blot will, de me, will detect the ACOE concentration because as a team, we realized that that's what was initially wrong with it and that's why our results were inconclusive was because the Western blot wasn't able to detect the uh, concentration of ACOE. We will also be retesting Actos, or the uh, active ingredient name of pioglitazone, as well as cinnamon extract. And since we know that vexorotein is positively, or is positive and does increase ACOE lipidation, we will use that as a positive control. Now, if successful, we will be using other FDA uh, approved drugs that have shown to increase glycolysis for further testing. At this time, we'd like to acknowledge the certain individuals and institutions that help with our projects. We would like to thank the School of Engineering and the Provost Grant for funding our project. We'd also like to thank Dr. David Holtzman of Washington University for providing the brain after sites that we use in our experiment. We'd also like to thank Dr. Richard Anderson of USDA in Baltimore, <coughs> Maryland for providing us with the cinnamon extract that we use. And we would also like to thank Dr. Francis Weaver and Doris Polis of the Wyoming University Biology Department for allowing us to use certain pieces of equipment when we need it. Thank you for your time, and I will open up the floor for any questions. So do we have any questions? You in the back? Yeah, so have you found any environmental purposes or reasons why uh, Alzheimer's has been on the You mean people being exposed to a certain environment that could cause Alzheimer's yeah, disease? Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, we, have, we haven't found anything like that. Where envi environmental exposure has caused this. I'm not sure. I've, it's just the there's a pet. It's a positron emission tomography. It's just a pet scan of someone who has a normal brain and someone who has advanced Alzheimer's disease. I'm not sure when it was taken. But that's the overall what it looks like in the brain with the glucose. Yeah, that's representing the decrease in the glucose metabolism because if you have increased glucose metabolism, your heat produces your, your, your more heat comes out of your brain. I think they're what they ate, like their what their appetite is. Um, I'm not sure because I'm not sure, you know, what they had, what these people had eaten uh, earlier in the day. So I'm not sure if if having more or less sugar that day um, caused these results or not. Uh, diabetics been shown to be more prone uh, to get Alzheimer's. <coughs> that sure. was honestly that wasn't really in our scope of work. Yeah. We, were, we weren't focusing on um, what factors into, I guess, Alzheimer's, whether it was environmental or if other diseases like diabetes or anything else affected it. Was, was the published study from Case Western in any way motivated by your published hypothesis? I'm no, not they, sure, but they we did. did their yeah, we published, we, our hypothesis was accepted in January for publication, and they submitted that theirs in. Uh, I think mid to late February. It was after our. So we were first. <laughs> now it's just a race to the patent office. So. Are there any other questions? Yes, sir. Are you guys going to be 
working with Widener to continue your study, or are you going to be passing it on to future senior project groups? We will probably be passing it on to next year's senior project group. Anything else? I think we have time for one more. Yes, sir? How does the PET scan uh, show glucose? Um, well, if you have a high glucose metabolism in the brain, one of the um, one of the products of glycolysis is heat. So if you have high glucose metabolism, you're going to have a lot of heat coming out of the cells in your brain. So if you take a PET scan, which is basically measuring the hot spots in the brain, you can see the red representing the, the, the hotter parts of the brain. You can see that the brain itself, the normal brain, there's more heat as opposed to the Alzheimer's disease, there's more black and purple. So, I mean, does that, does that answer your question? <laughs> if it doesn't, I mean, yeah. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.